are you already? Don't be like that. Well, this isn't how I usually start my videos. And I was just sat here thinking that this is something that I don't, I don't think I've ever told you that I do. And considering in this video we're about to do some very, very bougie stuff. Okay, I should pre-warn you. You can hear the sounds of Ali tearing his uh, dressing room to shreds because he's trying to find an outfit, okay? Because tomorrow we are going to Beaverbrook again, which is so nice. I've n I'd never been to Beaverbrook like five minutes ago and now I'm going twice in a couple of months. Um, but we're going to Beaverbrook tomorrow with um, Aston Martin and we're going to Goodwood Revival. It's gonna be a bougie few days, okay? I'm wearing a bougie dress, I'm wearing some bougie jewelry, and so I feel like I needed to add some balance to the vlog and tell you about something that I do in the evenings. First and foremost, I'm in my dressing gown, and not just any dressing gown, I'm in my cozy dressing gown. It is 30 degrees, and I am in my cozy dressing gown, <laughs> because, that is me in a nutshell. If it's not above like 40 degrees, I'm good in this one. And I'm probably not the only person that does this. But I often get on the sofa in the evenings and maybe I'll pick up my phone and I'll like scroll on social media. Um, or maybe I'll pick up my phone and I'll watch YouTube videos. Or like this evening I've listened to a podcast and done some scrolling on Instagram. And sometimes I just, I have these waves and tell me I'm not the only person that has this. I'm sure some normal people have it with their kids, <laughs> but I have it with my animals, okay? When I'm like, put your phone down, Lydia, and love your animals. Just do that. Put your phone down and love your animals because I don't want to get to a time when they're not here and think, gosh, you, you didn't spend enough time loving them. And so this is what I do. So I was just sat on the sofa there. My plate of, well, it was a plate of digestive, chocolate digestives, but it is no longer a plate of chocolate digestives. They are gone. Um, there is also a hornet that is stuck in the kitchen at the moment. And we're just pretending that's not happening. I'm just going to sit here and love my sausage dog. I don't know where Barkley is. Barkley's usually under the sofa. He's an interesting dog. But for the sake of balance and balancing out the bougie of my vlogs at the moment, I'm just going to sit here and love this one. I kiss him on his mouth like this. And he just lets me. And the worst thing is, is I know what he does with that mouth. He likes poo. He really likes poo. Farm animal poo, to be precise. He likes sheep poo but it's not every sheep poo it's just some and chicken poo we've learned that he likes chicken poo in fact when I leave the chicken coop in my Birkenstocks um I'll come often come out and have chicken poo on my Birkenstocks and um when I go back to put them on there is no chicken poo on my Bir Birkenstocks anymore because some little poo muncher likes to eat it anyway this is completely off brand that I'm doing this and talking to you about this, but I don't care. I feel like we needed some balance. So now you can't get mad at me for being bougie in this vlog, okay? Don't get mad at me. Okay, so we're going to have a little whiff of the eau de fromage. Perfectly eau de fromage. Also, this is not how I usually sit on my sofa. Someone commented that the eau de fromage is um, a yeast problem with their toes but I don't think it is his toes it's just kind of an aura of of baked cheese I wonder if he knows do you think he knows that he's like sometimes lots of people watch my mum just love me on the internet oh just little cheeks I'm gonna bite it can I bite it we like hold our faces like kind of thing. Sausage dogs, well just dogs in general, they're like... I kiss it. Can I kiss it? Yes you can. Can I kiss it? Yes you can. So anyway, that is me loving my sausage dog for six minutes on YouTube, just so I can balance out all of the bougie stuff that I'm about to do. 
this is gold content isn't it how much is that dog in the window <laughs> Right, now I have to maintain my dignity in my cosy dressing gown. You look massive. You look really slightly overweight. I'm not going to lie. I mean, in a good way. But you have to be very careful with sausage dogs. Because you, um, you don't want to put unnecessary strain on your appendages. And when you are very long in the body and long in the schnoot, and also long in the tail. <laughs> you have to be careful that you don't put strain on your back. Because otherwise we'll have to have you in one of those, in one of those wheelie things that the doggies, you know, that get too fat have to have. Massage? Would you like a head massage to it today? Is there any areas of uh, tension in particular that you would like me to focus on? Or is the paws and the sausage legs enough? Let's do the back toes then, shall we? No, don't, don't move, sir. Don't move. You make it very, very difficult. And what are we thinking in terms of polish today, sir? Are you hoping for something slightly more autumny. Are you an autumn palette? Or would you prefer something a bit more classic? Maybe a French manicure, perhaps? No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's official. We have the weirdest life ever. I'm down here giving Porty um, a manicure and a pedicure and a massage and you walk in like it's perfectly normal dressed like that <laughs> you know when you were younger you used to practice kissing on your teddies I do that on Porty now I'm like mm -hmm. French kissing no we don't French kiss this little kiss you move away from me. Play hard to get. That's enough because people are going to think, start to think that I'm weird if they don't already think I'm weird. Chicken leg. Chicken leg. Mm. Mm. Don't fall asleep. Now that's weird. You're falling asleep from me doing that. Mm. when people say that I'm not a mum this is what they don't see I am an actual mum like he is falling asleep in my arms actual mum not strong enough for this little crocodile I can't actually get up to turn my camera off now I didn't really think this through did I but some solid dog loving time. So if you've got an animal or if you've got children, just remember to love them. Bedtime, bedtime. We've got a bougie day tomorrow, Forty. Very bougie. <sighs> You're not bloody high enough. There we go. Hello everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed my little um, sausage dog loving session that I had at the beginning of this video. I am now up and getting ready for heading to Beaverbrook and I was doing my hair and I just thought to myself, I've had so many questions about doing my hair at the moment. I thought I would just give you a very, very quick run through. I have definitely shown this on my channel a hundred years ago, back when like all we used to do was tutorials and it wasn't actually like anything to do with vlogging. Um, but this is how I get a blow dry without having a blow dry. Um, and I thought I would just show you super, super quickly how I've been doing my hair recently. 
Um, it's probably the easiest way for me to do my hair, but I feel like it gives it such a lovely finish, like a really lovely effortless finish. So all I do is take my hair. I'm using the number one brush from Michael Van Clark and I take medium sized sections and I just give it a good smooth over, not too much because I don't want to lose too much of the volume, um, but I basically treat it kind of like you would if you were scoring a ribbon on a parcel for someone, but you don't want it to go curly whirly whirly, you just want it to have some, some shape. So once that's nice and smooth like so, you then take your straightener. Now I'm going to do this one towards my face because you alternate the sections so that you get this really lovely sort of, it's not even two sort, but just like, it gives so much more volume when you do to your face and away from your face and it doesn't feel too uniformed. So with this one, I'm gonna go towards my face and I just, tilt the straighteners inwards like so and you get that at the end so it's like a, a little ringlet but it won't really stay like that because it's so soft you then go on to the next section and pretty much repeat so on this one i'll split it down the middle and do it like this We've got a bit of a madhouse today, I have to be honest. We've got um, our like housekeeper sort of people here looking after the place. Then we've got some work going on on the chicken coop. Also, this, this little thing here, this is COVID regrowth. I keep finding these little areas in my like hair where I'm grow I've like grown my hair back after losing some of it during COVID. Luckily I was really I, I didn't suffer too much from it, but my goodness me, you notice. Um, but yeah so it's a bit mad here at the moment. It's also absolutely boiling. So if you can hear a slight white noise in the background, it's my fan positioned in front of the window. So for this front section now I'm going to go away from my face. So I go above like this and again just score but away and et voila you have the same on the other side now you don't want it to be too ringlety like i said so you're only really focusing it towards the end now i think this is probably a bit of a big bit so i'm just going to split it into two there's not really any uniform to it which is good and i find this so quick even with the amount of hair that i've got it's so quick to do so much quicker than me doing the waves in my hair that i used to do that I'm secretly not missing them at all. So I thought I would give you a quick little demonstration in this little underneath section like so. So again, this one is going to alternate to away from the face. And I'm just using my GHD Platinum Plus Styler just because I find them super easy to use. I've actually not really ever used, well, I have done, but the GHD I just trust. And then onto the last bit of this bottom section at the back, like so. Now, it's really annoying me because my hair washing system has actually fallen out of sync of my events because I've been wearing my hair up so much and I'm going to be wearing my hair up again tomorrow because we are off to Goodwood with the Aston Martin team. Now, I'm trying to make this vlog as interesting as possible because there are some events that both, like, I think Ali and I are really good. We, um, I actually think that one should have been away from my face, but whatever. no, it's not, it's to my face. Um, we're actually really good at like usually aligning what events we will be vlogging like, and we'll give each other an event. However, when it comes to Aston Martin, you can take the boy out of Newport Pagnall, but you cannot take the Newport Pagnall out of the boy. If you don't know Aston Martin, I believe they originate from Newport Pagnall. And that is where Ali grew up. And so you can understand why um, owning an Aston Martin was on his list as well as mine. But um, yeah, so he gets very, very sort of like, no, I really want to do this. And I get like, well, the last time I didn't vlog it and I felt really bad because I felt like I hadn't, you know, been gracious or grateful enough. So I'm going to vlog this one as well and I don't care. So I'm trying to give you as much information that isn't just that, but I still want to include what I'm wearing because I've got obviously my Dior bits. I've just received 
a very, very exciting delivery from the Garrard team as well to wear for Goodwood, which is amazing because um, their jewelry is just utterly spectacular. So for me to be able to wear some pieces for some events, it's going to be very, very lovely. So we're gonna get into those. So I am gonna show you some bits as well, and hopefully I'll get to show you a little bit more of Beaverbrook. We are heading down this evening for an evening. If you don't remember, Beaverbrook is where I went with Elizabeth Arden for the launch of the Retinal and HPR. And I am now going back with the Aston Martin team, which is lovely. So I'm really, really looking forward to experiencing it in the sunshine as well, because we have very, very warm weather at the moment. Um, in England and it was very very cold when I last went there. It's also my caramel and launch day today when you're watching this as well so I might be a little bit preoccupied but um, yes very exciting autumn winter launch day when it is 30 degrees outside. <laughs> Just how you want it to be unfortunately but hopefully you're all planning for your wardrobes and we have some exceptional pieces. Like I wonder because I feel like I actually haven't given one of my favorite pieces from the collection, the sort of attention that it deserves in my launch video. And one of the pieces is this stunning, like biscuity oatmeal shirt dress. And I would totally be wearing it today if it wasn't 30 degrees, because it is absolutely gorgeous. Right, anyway, as you can see, I'm doing my hair and it is forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards, simple as it is and then when you get to the end let it cool down and brush it out it is the simplest way to get the effects i think of a blow dry when you don't necessarily like blow dries like me i'm not a huge blow dry fan and I, I just don't really enjoy them much if i'm being perfectly honest so i created one for myself that i could recreate at home without a blow dry <laughs> so it's basically just not a blow dry but i just call it it's a fake blow dry Anyway, I'll show you it at the end. Et voila! So this side will drop a little bit more like this one. And again, I just use this brush to just brush everything out. Sometimes I brush it backwards, give it a little zhuzh. It just feels a bit softer, doesn't it, I think? When I look back at like when my hair was wavy, I feel like the wave, waviness was just, it's a bit hit and miss as well. Sometimes I look like a mushroom funny that isn't it it was like no that's how I do my hair and now I'm like mm, I'm not so sure anyway now product I'm going to go in with the three more inches healthcare for hair magic oil pop a few little spots onto this side of my hair this just really helps like smooth everything down close cuticles I actually don't know if it does that I'm just making that up um, but it feels nice on my hair so I do it basically you just do more of the stuff that feels nice a little bit more for this side. And then once I've done that through, like so, I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Bless me. <laughs> um, then I go in with this product, and this is a product that I would never have picked up if um, Michael Van Clark himself hadn't shown me how to use this, basically. Because I actually love this. So it lasts you forever. This is the 10 second transformation grooming balm. Now, if you're like me and you have really coarse hair, this might not be great for like a sort of thinner, wispier hair. But for me, my hair needs a lot of taming. And you just, it's kind of like a putty or a clay, I don't know, but it just melts into your hands. And you kind of warm it up. Then you just sort of, I tend to focus it on the ends of my hair because it really helps with smoothing things out but then also around the front, the hairline as well. I feel like it's a product that you don't know that you need when in actual fact you do need it. Like my hair has not looked this good in three years. Wow. Like I actually can't believe we're here. I know, I know there's certain people that just hate me talking about my hair, but like they don't mind me talking about my sausage dogs for however long, but if I talk about my hair, oh my goodness. But honestly, like, I think I'm just getting used to this again and feeling comfortable, which is just lovely. Anyway, 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 that's my little hair routine. I'll link all of the products in the description box down below. I washed my hair with Hairburst for longer, stronger hair because I've run out of my curly whirly one. 
um, and I used the conditioner as well, but I've been using the Kerastase resistance marks, mask kind of on and off as well, which is good. I'm just gonna do some bits around my face. It's such a shame because I love how my hair's looking and tomorrow I'm gonna put it up in a slip back bun. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna pack these. I've also got another product to show you, but hold on, my friend has just had surgery and she's messaged me. I'm awake, it's so painful. But yes, if you've got hair like me and like when you've got either new bits of hair or hair that's like broken and they like stick straight up like antenna, the grooming balm is so perfect for your hair. Very happy. Paul's just having a bloody hernia because there's someone in the garden that he has not approved. Anyway, other product. Oh my goodness me. That was probably me coming to, to, towards you like, oh my goodness me. <laughs> just a mouth. Fresh. Rose Morning Body Lotion. Oh my goodness. If you want an elegant, seasonless body fragrance, this is the freshest, most elegant. It's not old fashioned in any shape or form. This is absolutely beautiful. A velvety floral scent with vitamin C and E. My skin feels incredible. I'm like, I have like a a moral dilemma every morning now. I'm like, do I use Ro? Do I use Fresh? Or do I use my body oil? Both are so beautiful. Different fragrances, different vibes, but this is like an everyday. Really good value as well, I think, for something that is like a beautiful product. Does what it says on the tin. Smells wonderful. It's, it's expensive for a body cream. You can pick up body cream for two pounds, I know. And if that's your vibe, absolutely. But for me, body cream is part of like, it's part of my bougie. You know, when you get a little bougie and you need a little extra and you just wanna have, like body cream for me, it's an everyday thing, it's an absolute essential, so I like it to be as nice as possible without being ridiculous. That's why I save using my Elizabeth Arden Ceramide for um, the bougie days, because that's for your face and it's not for your body and yeah, I use it on my body and you're not supposed to do that, but I'm doing it anyway. Anywho, right, hair's done, time to pack, my goodness. Whilst I have you here, I am wearing one of my Terry dresses from Arvel. I wear these all the time when it's hot because they are pretty much the best whether you're throwing it on over a bikini or whether you're just wearing it around the house. It is, and I, in fact, I wear it as like a dressing gown, but for summer. Great for getting ready in, great for doing your makeup in. You've got free arms, but you've still got that towel in option. However, a wonderful, wonderful delivery from Garrard has arrived. So I thought I would talk you through the pieces that I am going to be wearing for my trip. I have to apologize if all you can hear is Porter barking. Sometimes we don't know what it is, but he just gets very, very perturbed by certain people and he's very perturbed at the moment. That's it. That's the, the only thing that I can tell you. We just get into the boxes or the pouches as well. So in this one, we have so these are a kind loan from Garrard for me to wear for this event and I'm so, so excited, you know, I have purchased from the brand, I'm a big fan. We felt that these were very, very fitting for tonight's event. So, because I'm obviously going with Aston, these are a pair of their wings earrings. Let's try them on. I hope they suit me, me and my funny earlobes. Now do we go like, which way do we put them in? I'm guessing this way actually. But because obviously the Aston Martin symbol is wings, this seemed, oh wow, like a spectacular choice. And the good thing is, is they go with my existing pieces from Garrard as well. But what a statement and so, so fitting for an evening with Aston Martin. Um, I actually don't know what dress I'm wearing yet. It's not like a formal, formal evening, but I thought, why not go out with some jewels? And then for tomorrow's event, I have some pieces from their Aloria collection, which they do in a beautiful yellow gold. So for that, we have the pendant, which I think will sit really, really beautifully. Um, at the neck of my Dior dress that I'm going to be wearing. I will obviously show you the full look all together, but I also have these in an earring, so I'm going to pack these all up. I'll show you the earring first as well. I've also had some gloves arrive from Cornelia James. You'll remember I actually got a pair of Cornelia James gloves for Christmas from Carrie, and um, I'm very, very 
excited to have a few more pairs and I got a pair of tall gloves basically which I think will be a little bit more what's the word like a little bit not so hot because it is going to be very very hot oh my gosh I'm going to love these aren't I just to show you one on these are the Aloria earrings and obviously I have the pendant to go with them I just felt like going with gold would be a really lovely statement now the only thing I would say is I don't have earlobes and so I think these are supposed to sort of wrap around kind of like my flower ones however not having earlobes means you um just make do with what you've got <laughs> but they still look so pretty and the gold I just think I always like I like gold on my skin so yeah I think this will be really lovely but I'll show you the finished look tomorrow of course We have arrived at Beaverbrook and we are staying. I just didn't think that the rooms could get any more beautiful and yet here we are in quite possibly the most beautiful room. So we're staying in the Dowager and as soon as I've walked in, I've spotted the most spectacular Tanner Kroll trunk. This is like a jewelry and watch mm -hmm. trunk by the looks of things. Apparently this is the only one that they have in uh, this particular room. So it'd be perfect for storing some of my jewelry from Garrard in. But just to show you the bedroom, it's very much in my style. Um, I'm loving these antique side tables, the dressings of the bed, the four poster bed. Oh my gosh, the cushions. Mr. Mill and Gordon is reading our introductory pack. There is a little writing and vanity desk, which this is probably the most perfect lighting situation to do your makeup in because look at that. Bright as a button, which is not the saying, but we're gonna go with it. And then this for me. One day, ladies and gentlemen, one day, I'm gonna have a bedroom with a sofa that, that looks out over views. Maybe not quite as spectacular as this, but close. Look at those views, and I'm getting to see them in the sunshine. If you remember when I was here last time, um, it was a little bit, a little bit grey, but wowzers, look at it now. Mother Nature's showing off again, isn't she, in these last few weeks of summer. Beautiful pink sofa, you know, I'm not a huge pink person. I always say it whenever something is pink, and then I'm like, but I love this. And that is a pink sofa that just feels super, super gorgeous. And then the trunks, oh, this, this is just, I can't, I can't cope. All of my bits and pieces have been delivered to the room. And then we head into the bathroom, which is a powder pink dream with a, we've got two balconies and a fireplace. Oh, and the artwork is spectacular. So this is the shower in here. Oh, oh and obviously we've got the Bamford products, which they have in this particular hotel and the separate lavatory. Wow. Oh my gosh, I love it. I, this is something I want to do this artwork above the toilet in this little alcove. Oh, I love it. Such a gorgeous hotel and this carpet and these views. Can you tell I'm excited? But anyway, we need to get ready. Oh gosh, Mr. Millen Gordon is already out on the balcony overlooking what is the most spectacular location to have dinner. Wowzers, look at that. Some breakfast is going to be enjoyed right here, I think. Trickling sound of water, bright blue skies. We also have a few little bits and pieces in here. I'm guessing that these are for you because dents are gentlemen's gloves, aren't they? You have some? I do, yeah. Do you? I didn't know you had I some. I should have brought my dents driving gloves, shouldn't I? Well, it looks like they've got you covered, babe. And it's a good job I bought my gloves too. Ah, perfect. We've got our own. Ah, and you get steamers in the room. Ah, and they hung my stuff. Oh, they're good eggs. Oh my gosh, I can't. And the mirror is just perfection. This is good. They're good. I'll take it. This is the one. I'll take it. 
Now, Mr. Mill and Gordon is about to start getting ready, but I thought I would tell you a little bit about why we're here. We've come to Beaverbrook because we are attending Goodwood Revival with um, the team tomorrow in celebration of their 110th anniversary in 2023. That is absolutely huge and such a milestone for the brand as well. But we are also celebrating 60 years of the iconic Aston Martin DB5 as well. So two celebrations in one. And I have a funny feeling that there's going to be some of the most incredible classic Aston Martins to be seen um, whilst we're here. So we're feeling very, very lucky about that. Um, I did unbox our gifts from the Aston Martin team over on Ali's vlog. So if you want to see that, then um, you can do so on his channel but um, what I wanted to do was talk you through my outfit for tomorrow obviously you'll see it tomorrow but um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to create something that I could wear again and again and again I didn't want to do something that was too like fancy dress or anything like that so I've gone for a really really classic Dior silhouette um, along with lots of pieces that were just in my wardrobe anyway. Um, I'm gonna do my hair fairly simple, but there is an on-hand hair and makeup team that could potentially help me if I want to do anything a little bit more sort of of the era, but I think I'm just gonna probably keep it quite simple. But tonight we have dinner, which is a swinging 60s theme, but I don't believe we have to dress up. It just says smart casual. And I'm quite happy about that because in all honesty, two fancy dress outfits would be a little bit too much for me. So um, yes, I've got my outfit for tomorrow and I'm just gonna wear my Amelia Wickstead boucle dress this evening. I'm just gonna refresh my makeup just a little bit, but other than that, I am good to go because we've just arrived and the sun is setting over the beautiful views in front of us, it's like a picture. Well, the earrings are on, they are absolutely stunning and such a great little finishing touch to the outfit. I've just refreshed my lips as well. I've got um, the little Hermes lip kind of oil over the top of my lip liner and I've gone for my Amelia Wickstead boucle dress but I'll give you a full shot in a minute but at the moment I am just admiring the views out of the windows here at Beaverbrook because it just gets more and more beautiful as the sun sets. Outfit of the evening Amelia Wick said boucle dress, which just feels like it just cinches you in. Emmy London, Josie pumps, pockets, little tan bag, and then obviously Garrard jewels and bits and pieces as well. Which uh, the suit is made with also a top wine in the soup, in the sauce with the soup coming as well. I choose this wine, uh, it's a Sauvignon grape from La Loire. And this producer, uh, very unusually, aged the Sauvignon in French bar. Only to, uh, to make a style, uh, that's why I choose it for the soup, because it's rich, a rich style. Because we have a, uh, we have a complexity that uh, given by the oak and the aromaticity of the Sauvignon. After you, you drink it on the palate, it, the Sauvignon possess an amazing acidity, mineral acidity in this case, because, it come, because this wine comes from old vines, so the acidity is very pronounced. So it accompanies the soup extremely well because of the richness, but without being overpowering. And then as this, afterwards, this amazing mineral character, acidity, that clean your palate, leaving the palate super, super fresh. That's why I choose this one. Oh my goodness. So this is a loaf of sourdough with a beautiful Gruyere soup and it pairs beautifully with this wine, which is actually quite shocking because this is um, aged in oak and I don't usually like oaky wines, but apparently it pairs with this and this is absolutely beautiful. So let's dig in. Chef in Beaverbrook. Uh, I've been here for the last six years and my specialty is Japanese cuisine. However, uh, I've been trained only not, not only in Japanese but also working for Gordon Ramsay or in Noma in Copenhagen. Uh, tonight uh, I'm taking you back to the 60s when uh, Aston Martin uh, DB5 was uh, invented just one year later to be iconic car for uh, James Bond. Uh, so we're starting with a French uh, soup, 
in the 60s, the English cuisine was very much uh, in, um, uh, influenced by the French uh, cooking. So uh, French soup was something very, very common. So uh, we serving them with the uh, foraged jiro uh, mushrooms, which are uh, now in the season, and some uh, Gruyere cheese uh, on top. Enjoy. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. If I can, on behalf of Aston Martin, because we're really delighted that um, you've been able to join us this evening. And also, um, what an amazing atmosphere and what an amazing place. And wanted to start by just saying a big thank you to Rafi and all of my team for putting on this amazing event and all the, uh, all the work that's gone in with the team at Beaverbrook to hopefully a really special uh, event here tonight and uh, over the next couple of days. So thank you, Rafi, for all the work that you've done. Also wanted to thank you all, because I know you've travelled... Uh, very far, the guests that have come here from the US, um, from Europe, um, you know, travelled from Northamptonshire and, and all over, very all far. over the place, uh, to be with us. So thank you, we really, we really, really appreciate it. And a warm welcome to what I'm sure you, you'll agree is an incredible location uh, here at Beaverbrook. Obviously, it's a really significant time for us at Aston Martin. You know, this is our 110th anniversary year. Um, but as a brand, I don't think we've ever been more relevant. Um, we're, we're, we're really enjoying a year that we're celebrating our proud history, but at the same time, never being more future facing. Um, we launched EB12 earlier this year, which is the first of our next generation of sports cars. Um, we announced uh, earlier in the summer uh, our electrification strategy, um, which will see us create our own bespoke uh, battery electric vehicles platform. So, you know, very much looking to the future while at the same time celebrating what we've always been about. Um, and our fantastic uh, kind of unrivaled history. So as you can tell from the food that you're having tonight, the music that you've been listening to, we really want to take you back to, to 1963. It's a really significant year. You know, it was the breakthrough for the Beatles. They had their first, uh, first number one. In the US, it was when the Beach Boys were arrived and were uh, surfing, surfing USA. Uh, and if you, um, if you went to the cinema, uh, people were queuing round the block to see Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton in a film called Cleopatra. Steve McQueen was jumping over a barbed wire fence in his Triumph motorcycle in The Great Escape. And I think it's really interesting that when you see the beauty of the, um, that, that, that green car outside the DB5, um, it's very easy to think about it now as a classic car and we can, know and, uh, we can know and love it for that. But it's really important to remember that at the time, this was very much like the DB12 is today, at the cutting edge of automotive technology, um, design and engineering. We are on to our second course and the first thing I did was pointed out that we have some very lovely Bordello cabbage ware because I'm still trying to convince Ali that it's very, very cool, but um, probably failing miserably, but this looks absolutely delicious. Good morning from Beaver Park. It's just gone six in the morning and we're up, ready to get ready for the day. Looking a little bit bleary eyed I think, but makeup is on and I have just secured my hair with conditioner and you know what, I don't think I've, mm, actually it doesn't matter because I'm going to have a um, hat on but I think I'm going to have to work on my hairline because I have pulled it too far back. There I was saying that I feel like I've got to grips with how you're supposed to do buns in your hair. No, I've failed. I've made myself look like an egg. But you have to trust the process in the fact that this is going to be my hat for the day. You're not really gonna see anything because the hat is not coming off. But I may have to work on my hairline. Let's go do that. Ali set, bre um, set breakfast up on the balcony for me and I sat out there and I had my coffee. But now I've got the lovely Caroline here doing my hair and makeup ready for the day. So she's just actually finishing some bits off. Um, and then we're going to get my hat on and get it secured. But she's used this fast. Is it bed head? No. SNT oh, wow. stick. She's used this fascinating product which has done basically what you want um, hairspray to do 
but without it being like rock solid and it makes it super slick. So I think I'm gonna have to get this. Apparently it's from Amazon. So I'll, if I find it, I'll link it down below. But that's amazing. And then we've done a little bit on my eyes and we're just gonna finish things off. We've got a few little lashes in there as well. So I'll set you up and then we're gonna get dressed. These nets will show. Are you okay with that? Yeah, yeah. I think that's the whole, the whole point. point. Yeah, yeah, I, so, yeah that's I think good. you want to kind of see that. Yeah, it is a little bit. It yeah. gives you a little bit of a, just that vintage yeah, yeah, yeah. vibe, doesn't it? Yeah, I love it. And I think boxes normally look as messy as just a tit. I mean, that's definitely much higher than mine in my hat. <laughs> a working ping box, this is. <laughs> No, <laughs> I'm really judging you by your pin box right now. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that's a proper ballerina. Yeah. Prima donna fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> My absolute pleasure. Amazing. Yeah, and I think that the the net helps as well. Yeah. To like just, it just my hair's really, really like. That's yeah, what my hair's no, like. And that will last all day now. Amazing. So uh, yeah. Oh, you're, thank you're, you so much. Can my I? absolute pleasure. Well, hair and makeup are done. I'm just popping my finishing touches, which are my Cornelia James gloves, which these are the tall gloves with the bow. I should have got these in a size seven and not a seven and a half, but that is um, unfortunately, I didn't have time to change them, but I bought two other pairs. I've sent one of them back and I'm exchanging a cashmere pair for a size seven for winter because they just like they make your hands look so elegant so i thought some cashmere gloves for winter will be lovely um but i think that these really make the outfit i'm so so glad that i um decided to get these for the outfit as well um hat is done i've had the amazing caroline do my hair and add some lashes some makeup some stuff on my eyes and luckily for me Mr. Millen Gordon thinks that the black is best. And when Caroline walked in to fix my hat, she said, oh, you look like Grace Kelly. And I was like, well, it's good because I've got the Kelly bag. <laughs> and that was kind of the look I was going for. Um, but yes, this is my Goodwood, my first Goodwood Revival outfit. And I feel wonderful. And I've got the comfy shoes on, which means I can last all. That's good. That oh, nice one. Yeah, good. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ali is just learning the ropes because we are going to be driving the DB5 Superleggera and my goodness this is my dream dream car tan leather interior the most spectacular shade of green. Look at the wheels. We both get the opportunity to drive this today. This is extremely special. We are driving into our very first Goodwood in none other than the Aston Martin DB5. And this is quite possibly our dream car. In all honesty, I don't think we could have picked a better, a better way to do this. I have a very strange feeling that this is going to be a very expensive drive to Goodwood because I can see the smile on this man's face when he's driving a one million pound car. I think it's about that now, I'm not sure. They might be less, it might be half a million. Wasn't this the one that we sat in last year? At, at, um, it very, do you know what? And that was 500,000? Yeah, So it's it not a million, half a million. Pocket change. <laughs> Sold. Well, we have stopped yeah, off for some refref ref refreshments. I can't get my words out today. And we've got some cinnamon buns, some sausage rolls. Lovely little spot to stop. We've just been having lunch in this spectacular location. Look at these views. My goodness me. Well, blast from the past. We are just driving through Petworth which is where Carrie and I came once upon a time antique shopping and um, we just passed the stonemasons or stonemakers arms where we parked and we're driving through the village now so it's very very beautiful. <laughs>
just finished up lunch and now we're taking a walk around the actual sort of ground. It is absolutely massive. And I've already found a vintage Louis Vuitton trunk stand. Apparently there's somewhere selling vintage Birkins. This is definitely right up my street. I think you could honestly spend a fortune here. All of the vintage shops, the, the antiques are spectacular. Um, so yeah, now we're heading over the, the steps there and we're gonna head to the fair and take some of the, I think it's like vintage fairground rides. I'm not a huge fairground ride taker, but we're gonna go and have a look anyway. bring their vlogging camera mine yes. it was my bright idea and my phone has been dead for the last two hours i've been trying to find somewhere to be able to charge my phone to be able to speak to you i'm not able to show you anything okay um we've honestly had the best best day and it's just been so wonderful to see so many of you guys here as well The shopping is insane. Everyone here is so nice. The food is incredible. And we have literally had the best time. I think this is one of the only events where we've stayed after we're supposed to be here. Like yeah. we were supposed to leave how many hours ago? Two. <laughs> it's ridiculous. We're just heading back to hospitality now, but best pizza is literally cooked on the back of a Defender. So, so good. I have had the best day ever. Oh my gosh. Have you? Yeah, it's been awesome. I've literally Absolutely loved, loved this. it. Marvellous. Let's go. Babe, I've never seen you like this. Never. I just don't think never, ever, oh, ever. That's over there. Bye. Good morning, everyone. We are back home now and we are preparing for our, <coughs> our friends to come over. You can hear the sweet sound of Mr. Millen Gordon with his trusty leaf blower, which sends Porter into a complete frenzy, um, but it does always make the biggest difference to how our house looks. Um, but unfortunately, Porter can't hack it. Porter, enough. In fact, no, that is such a lie. He was absolutely fine until I walked down the stairs. 
the moment that I walk down the stairs, he just loses his marbles and he feels like he has to like protect me. It's ridiculous. I honestly think it has something to do with us getting him during lockdown and him just feeling like he potentially needed to protect me because I was in such a like bad way. I genuinely think dogs have such like interesting knowledge of like energy. Oh, sunshine. But yes, we're back from Goodwood and prepping for our friends who live in Monaco. They're coming over. Well, they're already here and I saw Lauren on Thursday, Tuesday, but um, we are having them over for the evening and we're having a barbecue, cooking lots of stuff and I have to bake. But yesterday was honestly amazing. In fact, so good. I don't know if I told you, but the, the Aston Martin team, they were planning on leaving at five and we just stayed on until the evening, until it like sort of calmed down and cooled off a little bit. And we just had, we had the best time ever. So much fun. I wish we'd done like more days. I've never, I've never done that before where I've like wanted to stay even longer. Such a good environment. Everyone was so lovely, like a really lovely, energy in everyone that we met saw so many old friends i obviously met oh you might not even know yet i don't know but i met the karen millen obe in fact i met her son and her daughter as well and some of her friends and it was a real moment i think for me because like i've never met her before and it was like i've been such a huge fan of hers since i was little like i will always tell you that i bought so many of her like original designs way back in the day and so for me to then obviously work with the brand in the way that i do and have had like my own design in it and things like that it's um it was just i just didn't know how it would be when i first met her and so it was a real kind of just lovely we had such a lovely chat it was so, so wonderful hearing about her experience with her most recent collection she has another collection coming out and yeah, just really, really cool. So um, such a wonderful, wonderful day. The Aston Martin team were incredible, like no expense spared and just an amazing, amazing day. And I feel like I loved my outfit so much. I met so many followers and like so many of you guys. And it's just really, really cool. Um, so yeah, I, I had such a lovely time. I'm a little bit bleary eyed today because the, the rosé was flowing and I just had a really lovely day, but the rosé is going to be flowing today as well. And I am just prepping to get a cake in the oven. I'm going to make a um, lemon cake, lemon and blackberry actually. I did mean to get out some blackberries. These are blackberries from the garden that I froze which is always a good one because I love adding them to cake. So I'm going to do uh, black blackberry and lemon cake. And um, then I've got some pasta to make. Ali's got to fire up the oven. Um, I do need to pop out and get the um, chickens, some more hay, and just some general tidbits. So I thought as much as possible, I will vlog today, but you know what I'm like when I have a good time, I never think to pick up my camera. And yeah, so I'll do my best. I'll do my best, but just a chilled, Lots of food. We might actually get to harvest some of my uh, corn on the cob today as well to put on the barbecue. So that'll be really good as well. So anyway, I'm going to get cracking on the cake. I've already greased my uh, baking tin. And I'm just gonna pop in a little sheet on the bottom. Like so. And then we've got three of the hen's eggs. We've got a Burford Brown. We have a I think this one is, I don't know who this is actually, I think this might be Bluebell, and then this is Jemima. So three large eggs and dos lemon to go in cake. Porter, give it a rest, please. You, small stuff, are not going to protect anyone. You haven't even got the balls to actually bite anyone's ankles. You just grab their trouser legs. Don't look at me like that. He's like, Mommy, you embarrassed me. I was, trying, I was trying to be a big bad boy and Mommy embarrassed me. Mommy, you embarrassed me. I'm only small, but I am very scary. Lord Farquaad, look at your head. You look like Lord Farquaad. The silhouette of Lord Farquaad. You are so smart, but you are also so small. The cake is in the oven, ready to bake. It's actually been baking for a while now, to be fair, about 10 minutes. I am now having a bit of a organize in the kitchen because there's just stuff everywhere. So whilst the cake is in the oven, I'm going to pop down to the kitchen garden to collect 
um, tomatoes and see if my corn on the cobs are good to go. Where are my shoes? And I think Mr. Millen Gordon has stolen my truck. Ali is doing the compost and I've just had an incredible harvest of tomatoes. I'm going to use this to make a pasta sauce and I'm also going to use it to do um, just like a mozzarella salad. Even though they don't like mozzarella, we will definitely have it and then they can have some of the tomatoes and have them with balsamic glaze and things like that. Still absolutely loads on here. In fact, that is a juicy red one that I think I should take from the clutches of this little spider. Sorry, Mr. Spider, but I'm gonna have that one. I'll take some of these. Oh, a little squishy one. And now I'm gonna have a look at my corn on the cobs because they say you have to wait until these bits go brown. And so I reckon that we have enough on here to have a corn on the cob each this evening. And now it's time for some carrots. The cake is cooling as we speak. Looks very, very, very good. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I've found my rhythm with baking and I found my recipe that works. I'm so happy. It's going to be one of those days where my vlogs maybe aren't so um, relaxing because there's puppy dogs losing their mind and Mr. Millen Gordon has got all his gadgets out. He is currently mowing the lawn, topless. You're welcome. One thing I haven't shown you is the Nicholson's guys came and we have running water and outdoor hot water. I actually can't believe it. So this massive loot of vegetables, I can prepare out here, I can wash them. It doesn't get my kitchen mucky in any way and I can organize everything. It is the absolute dream. Mr. Millen Gordon has come bearing the goods of five eggs. One must have been left in there from yesterday, though, because two of the same. Two, two, there are two Burford Browns. Yeah, so so I think one they must have laid. Uh, two, two. So Carrie three, obviously three didn't hens. check. Yeah, so there's um, three hens that have laid, but two on the Browns. So take out from the right. Yeah. And then move them up. Mr. Millen Gordon's procedures. I've got space. <laughs> no, what I, I need to take more out than that. <laughs> so we always take out from the left. Okay. We don't need to worry about dates. Yeah. Cool. Fantastic.
like really helps bring out a lot of flavour. Yeah, but they say like butter, salt, mm. pepper, are like a chef friend. But they're not too buttery either. No. Just listening to it. Allow the alcohol to just evaporate and settle into the environment. <laughs> Actually, no, that's a, that is a very good amount of 